All right, gentlemen. Hey, Derek, thank you, buddy. And uh, I can give testimony that what Derek shared about some of the radical changes he's had to make to address radical sin is is the truth. He is not on social media. He is. Mm -hmm. He fleed and he ran. And uh, you know, some people view fleeing as being weak. I think fleeing is uh, is strength, mm -hmm. strength. And so I, I can give testimony to that. And I know that. Uh, Michaela and Rowan are very grateful that you're a man of character that is, that is uh, doing it the right way. Uh, gentlemen, Derek has asked a couple of questions here about compromises. Uh, that's, that's where this all begins. Um, he's asking about well, what can you do to combat the sin, the dangers that you see there. And then, and then what, what helps you uh, pursue, pursue mm -hmm. righteousness, faith, love, and peace. So, some great questions. I'd love to have you guys react and speak back to Derek. Maybe you got some questions for him or mm -hmm. an insight or some wisdom and counsel. So uh, let's uh, uh, just unmute yourself and let's uh, hear from you guys. Hey, guys, I, as, as he was talking this morning, I found it interesting in Scripture. David walked out one night and looked out and saw Bathsheba, and eventually she ended up with him. And you know the story. Joseph with Potiphar's wife, she came in there one day, she's flirting with him, and he ran. He ran so fast, he left his coat in there. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be embarrassing, really, to do that, but the contrast is pretty striking. One of them, uh, kind of what you alluded to here, Derek, the temptation of thought. David stood there and looked, and those thoughts lingered, mm -hmm. and David never intended for any of that to happen like that, but those thoughts lingered, and you see the result of that, but Joseph ran pretty striking difference. Amen, Steve. Good. Anybody else? Yes, Rod and Derek. Thank you, Derek, for that. I appreciate your, your um, openness, your honesty. You know, you're a genuine guy. I love you and I'm proud of you. Um, what about if there's a way that the enemy flees? Instead of us fleeing, what if there was a way that we could put him to flight? And uh, that's the verse that I've used for years, having the same struggle and lots of lots of problems with not only that, but sexual addictions as well. Um, in James 4, 7, we read, Submit yourselves then to God. Mm -hmm. And just before it, it says, humble yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll include that in James 4, 6. Humble yourselves. God, help us be humble. Submit yourselves then to God. And then the next thing, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. So there's defense and there's offense. Mm -hmm. You know, Derek, Derek's. Obviously, a student of both. There's another great verse of scripture that I've probably prayed, Derek, thousands of times. Mm -hmm. Father God, I humble myself before you. I submit myself to you. I resist the enemy, knowing that he must flee according to your word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hey, Joe, what a, what a promise to claim right there. That uh, I, I love that, the offensive side and the defensive side. Yeah, requires both. Yeah. Maybe even some special teams. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. James 4 7, guys. Take that, write that one down in your notes. That's a good one. Hi, this is Jeff. And uh, I have been 32 years sober now. And so this was like uh, the November 21st is when I stopped. My son was born December 11th, and I can say that I've not had a drop of alcohol as long as he's been alive. So that's been one motivation for me. Mm. And then coming up with, uh, you know, man in the mirror coming up, with, I did that with my brother after I stopped, and I came up with a life worth statement that I want to spend the rest of my life sober. Feel God's peace, peace 
with a fearless trust and to serve him in all that I got, in all that I do. So, you know, we're called to not have any other gods before us. Well, alcohol was, was my God during that time. And a couple of verses that come to mind for me is uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he'll provide a way out so you can stand up under it. Then, then the next 2 Corinthians 10, 13, 10, 4 and 5, 10, 4, is the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So another thing that's helped me is, is to uh, memorize scripture. So, you know, when I am tempted, um, a scripture comes to mind. So that's a little bit of my testimony. Oh, Jeff. Thanks for sharing and being so transparent. Appreciate it. This was very helpful for me. Thank you. Jeff, that's beautiful. So you're, uh, I've lived in the city almost uh, a little over 32 years myself. So when I first met you at Colonial Prez years ago, that's when you were, you were starting that victorious living then. Yeah. That's so cool. That's right. Thanks. Praise the Lord. Hey, Scott, I, right, I got to call on you. I see your two wonderful Young young children there, Josh and Caleb. So good to see them sitting with you. Any reaction from the Ridings family on all this? I mean, you guys are you guys are fighting the good fight, and uh, it is a fight, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I think Derek, thank you for your message. It's like you said, this is not anything new per se. That I mean, Rod, you've taught on this for years, and these are things that I heard and I've taught to the boys here. And it, it is a daily it's a daily deal. I, I've shared with you, Rod. It, I got to die to my flesh every single day, every day, because uh, you've got the flesh, you've got the, the culture, and you've got the enemy, right? That's constantly uh, wanting to take us out. So, um, you know, offense, defense, all this that you've shared is, is fantastic. I, I took myself off Facebook, Derek. It's interesting you said that, but for me, I didn't take myself off that in the past. Um, I get my my overview of what's going on through Lori. So Lori shares with me what's happening on Facebook. So um, for guys that, uh, you know, if that's one area, you know, count on your spouse or your wife to be able to share what's going on. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just blessed that, uh, you know, the, my, my sons are pursuing that. Uh, Derek, thank you for, again, just, just that transparency, I think is so key. And, and, and Rod, you're, you're, uh, um, what you teach so much on accountability. So having men in your life that can speak into you and ask those questions, that second question is, is key um, for sure. And so until, until we're taken away, like you said, um, we will be tempted every day, but, but God, right. But God um, has given us every ability of the, the tools. Um, he's given us his, his spirit to, uh, to counteract all the, 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 the challenges of this world. And, um, you know, that's, that's the beauty. We know who's already won. Um, we know who's, uh, uh, you know, we're victorious through Christ. And so it's, it's him alone that we've got to continue to pursue. Um, I think for me, that's the key is, is, is pursuing these things. When you're pursuing those, um, that's what you're focused on. And so what you're focused on is what you're going to live out and uh, your behavior will, will um, come about because of that. So, you know, Scott, I'm reminded of an old seminary uh, professor that was invited to come back and give a chapel service one day. And he was in his 90s and uh, his subject that day was sexual purity, you know. And so at the end, they opened the questions and the students asked, so when do you get, when do you get over, you know, sexual sin? When do you when do you stop lusting? When do, what is it? And the professor said, it's three years after you're in the grave that you get over it. <laughs> and he was communicating very clearly, you know, if you're a man, this is every man's battle, and it will take it'll it'll be beyond the grave that you finally can be fully victorious. And so, uh, 
Derek, I don't know how that makes you feel, or Josh and Caleb. Mm-hmm. You know, it you, you don't you don't get to an age where you're over this stuff. It 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 uh, you know we're we're men, we're human, our flesh, the world, the devil, all those voices are communicating uh, you know bad things, and uh, mm-hmm. that'll that'll ultimately kill you. So you got to just be on your guard. You got to set up those offensive and defensive uh, weapons and and be ready. So. Uh, uh, it, I tell you what, it encourages me as an older guy to see younger guys aggressively mm-hmm. combating this. And it mm-hmm. and it reminds me, Rod, don't take the pedal off the metal for yourself as well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, lead with a limp. I love that, Derek. I love that that concept of leading with a limp and recognizing, man, I'm one. I'm one decision away from being very stupid again. And mm-hmm. so I've got to I got to day, die daily. I got to die daily. Yep. Yep. Great. Any any other thoughts, guys, uh, from anybody? And uh, it's just so good to talk very candidly about a subject that is very very pertinent for all of us. So, um, so as a young man, I will say as well, coming from the perspective of one of the things that I find um, oftentimes for young people is that we're struggling with finding our purpose in society, and one of the things that I love about this specifically and in some of the other things I've heard you speak on a little bit, Rod, and just some of the other people that my dad's put in my life as mentors to speak into this specific area is that it, it, a lot of it has been focused around the reality that you have to have a purpose behind why you're doing this. And especially for someone who, I mean, I'm currently just starting college. So I, I still have, to look forward to whatever my purpose is with a job and a career and whatever it is. And I just find even I'm at a Christian campus right now. And even there I found there's every day there's guys just looking for a purpose as to why should I wake up in the morning? Why should I be doing this? Why should I pursue even God? Um, And like, this is the one area that I found in my life is like, you have a purpose behind this, not because you're doing it for yourself or for anything else, because you look to those future points, you look to those areas like you were saying today about where you're running. I mean, on top of just the righteousness, the faith, the love and the peace specifically for young men. I mean, one of the things that like for me is like I, I want to I'm running because towards wanting to have a good marriage in the future, going to find a good spouse. It's like the only way I get there is I have to I have to figure myself out first. I have to get my path straight. I have to get my relationship with God. Right. And that that starts with every day being able to pursue this and look at it and say, okay, where are my compromises so I can break this down? And so another part of this is just, it, it gives you a purpose every morning. Cause I, I, I find at least for me and some of the other young men that I talk to is it's like, we, we struggle in the morning getting up and being like, okay, what's my purpose for today? And this, this is that purpose. This purpose is I want to pursue God. I want to pursue this righteousness. I want to pursue something else. Um, and so that's just, Another thing that in this little short level of life that I found is that this is so important because it gives that purpose to to those who may not know what their purpose is in life. It can give you that purpose. And don't you think that's why Paul urges us to pursue, pursue? I mean, there's a, there's intentionality. There is an aggressiveness to say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna set my minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are below. So the pursuit of that, I mean, Derek, I thought it was, you know, I'd forgotten about that book, about that sports psychology book mm-hmm. that about, you know, and it really reinforces Proverbs 23, 7, which says, you know, as a man thinks within himself, so he is. Mm-hmm. And if you think you're going to, you know, do something stupid, guess what? You're probably going to do something stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're saying, you know, my mindset is I'm on, I'm on these four mm-hmm. principles, man, I tell you what, it, it's a game changer. Anybody else? Damian Cooper, I see you got on here. Uh, you know, any reaction to setting your mind right and uh, setting, uh, you know, you're you're in that same battle, that same fight as well. I don't know if you're able to unmute yourself, but I'd love to hear from you too, buddy. You may not be able to. Anybody else? Anybody else? Can you hear me? Yeah, go for it. All right, so cool. I'm holding my son right now, and my daughter is playing with her Barbie camper, and so I didn't want to be too loud. And I was like, "Oh no, I'm going to get on." But Derek, well done. 
it's always good to have younger people, especially my age, to share the word and the gospel and to hear just what God's burning inside their heart and just to hear, you know, Scott's son share about purpose. And, you know, one thing as I was sitting and reflecting on just about pursuing, you know, holiness and righteousness, it's a choice. Um, the gospel actually does not give us an option because God says, I am holy, so you must be holy. But every day we must have a choice to choose whether or not we're going to humble ourselves like Joe was sharing that. He chooses every single day to humble himself, to submit to God. It's within that choice that we feel. A lot of men in our society, the reason why they're living a life of destruction or a life of, for like there's, there's no love. I was just with a couple yesterday that for like, there's no agape love. There's there's that, that friction that we have in us. And we must choose that agape love. We must create and cultivate that agape love. And as you pursue it, it will arrive. But the fact of arriving is not the actual the crown itself is the process and actually you get to enjoy to see the molding and the transformation of who you are. And it's the transparency and the vulnerability you're sharing, Derek. And, and I'm, I'm just encouraged just to hear what God done in your mind and done in your heart and what he's doing in your soul. And you know, sweet your baby girl and, you know, seeing your wife. And it's, it's cool that as a young man, a man of God that has this fervor, that has this, this vibrant, this, this, this urgency to chase after God's own heart. You're going to see just that in your own home. You're going to see that within your marriage. You're going to see that in your little girl. And as I'm holding my phone with old son right now, I know he's hearing these words of his father. He may not understand right now what I'm saying, but in his heart, he understands that his daddy is choosing to get on a Zoom call, knowing that he can be doing anything he can right now, but I'm choosing to hear the word of God and allow my son to hear it and he can hear the very words of the gospel itself and have his father's words and because it's that pursue and pursue is something that is so passionate something so wonderful so beautiful but it can be so nasty at times too i think so many people have failed to realize is that you know when you're trying to pursue a career and you're trying to pursue you know a championship as athletes right it's not always fun <laughs> it's not always fun at all but man, let me tell you something. It's the beauty of understanding that I'm getting stronger, that my endurance is actually getting more well toned within my lungs and my capacity. That is our spirituality. And just seeing God do obstacles through the things that we have to have to face, the trials, the tribulations. It's the righteousness, it's the, it's the holiness that helps us to see the goodness of who God is. And so, man, Derek, thank you so much. And again, it's just a choice. It comes back down to what are we going to choose? We're going to choose to deny ourselves. We're going to choose to follow God. And we're going to choose to submit. And we're going to choose to love and choose to pursue that thing. And so that, that's just some of the things I had. And I was going to share some more stuff with you personally, you know, Derek. And, but I, I literally said, God, if God calls on me, I'll share. And so definitely, God has me something to share from my heart. So again, thank you. Thank you, man, for sharing your hearts with vulnerability and transparency. But it does take boldness, which I'll be sharing you in a couple of weeks. I'm excited because they gave me some other ideas to really think about this next week as I continue to prepare. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. All right. Anybody else this morning? Gentlemen, thank you so much for being part today. We love, love seeing you on Tuesdays. Uh, some of you will see tomorrow, Wednesday, live uh, at the Stanley. And uh, 